A vote is expected tomorrow in San Francisco, which could be the first of its kind in the United States. Lawmakers hoping to mandate new protections for firefighters, essentially a wardrobe change. And it all has to do with their uniforms and the potentially dangerous materials used to make them. But there are concerns that the fix could create even more hazards for first responders. Senior investigative reporter Bagad Shaban takes us into the firefight. Need water coming? Lieutenant Magali Sadie is teaching the next generation of firefighters about what to expect on the front lines. Our whole job is to work under pressure, manage your emotions and your fears, and get the job done. Regardless of how dangerous it may be. Regardless. That includes the risks they can see and the ones they can't. I definitely don't want someone else to have to go through what I did. Sadie is a two-time cancer survivor. She underwent radiation and ultimately a double mastectomy. Here in San Francisco, female firefighters have a six times higher rate of breast cancer than the national average. The department has lost more than 300 firefighters to cancer over the past 20 years. Ongoing exposure to smoke and other chemicals is so serious, the World Health Organization now classifies firefighting as an actual carcinogen. Nice work. And in recent years, studies have also shown the jackets and pants firefighters rely on to stay safe during emergencies are made with materials proven to cause cancer. To put something in the equipment to people who are already there to risk their life for you seems really malicious. These so-called PFAS chemicals help clothing repel flammable liquids and resist extreme heat. But researchers say that compounds can be harmful when absorbed through the skin. The level of exposure for firefighters and exact health risks are still being studied. What is it like knowing that the very thing that's supposed to protect you may actually have been part of the reason you got cancer? You know, we can't stop the job from being dangerous. We can't not run into fires, but we can change the future. We can make it so that someone else doesn't have to go through this. We're tired and we're dying. On the steps of San Francisco City Hall, behind a mound of uniforms, firefighters and lawmakers recently announced plans to enact a first in the nation ban on firefighter clothing made with PFAS. Those uniforms, known as turnouts, would need to be replaced over the next two years. Fundamentally, what's at stake is people's lives. San Francisco Supervisor Aaron Peskin authored the legislation. He says while outfitting an entire department won't be cheap, doing nothing could force the city to pay an even higher price. The approximately $10 million that will cost is so small compared to a human life, is so small compared to the cost of health care, is so small compared to the cost of settling lawsuits. It is morally right and it's financially right. But alternative gear that doesn't use PFAS still isn't widely available, even though the potential health hazards have been known for years. Critics, including the Firefighters Union, argue that's because industry standards released by the National Fire Protection Association continue to be written in a way that favor the use of PFAS chemicals by including certain requirements that can't easily be met using other materials. The NFPA tells us it doesn't create or dictate standards, but instead relies on expert volunteers, including many representatives of the firefighting community. The NFPA and the Firefighters Union remain locked in a heated lawsuit about what the standards should say. We contacted some of the largest manufacturers of firefighter gear to understand why PFAS continues to be used. Only Viking responded, telling us there's been a lack of PFAS-free fabrics approved by the NFPA, but says it's now testing alternative materials and plans to release a new line of gear by the end of the year, manufactured without PFAS. At least two other companies, Firedex and Lion, are already advertising PFAS-free uniforms that are now being tested at fire departments across five cities, including San Francisco, where firefighters say so far the gear is working. We don't want to just trade one hazard for another, so we'll burn the first one. Chemist Brian Ormond is trying to find out if those alternatives will be safer long term. At his lab at NC State University in Raleigh, he and his team are testing fabrics for reliability. There's a little bit of char right here. So far, he says, his research has shown removing PFAS can make uniforms less breathable and more flammable. 
we're introducing a potential hazard for flammability on the fire scene where firefighters didn't have that before. But he cautions what he's seeing in the lab could differ from what firefighters might experience on the front lines. Regardless, first responders across the country continue to suit up. So even with the risks, you're yes. still willing to put on the uniform? In a heartbeat. It's not a choice when we have to do our job. It's our job. Nice work, buddy. But Lieutenant Sadie is concerned about her trainees, who were just issued the same type of standard clothing she's worn for decades. Her fight for safer gear, she says, is for them. So firefighters can focus on saving lives instead of worrying about their own. This would affect the future. And if it changes and uh, legislation goes forward, then, yeah, then it was all worth it. With the investigative unit, I'm Begat Chaban.